Madeline. Let her come home. She's out there. And I want to bath. Do you believe she is still alive? Please continue to pray for Madeline. Sejam bem-vindos a este especial informação. Viajamos até Londres para reabrir o mistério do casal britânico que pôs Portugal e o mundo inteiro a rezar, a chorar e, meses mais tarde, a duvidar da sua história. Esta é a sua primeira grande entrevista a uma televisão portuguesa desde que o caso foi arquivado há mais de um ano. Hello, Kate. Hi, Jerry. Hi, You've called us here or invited us here to show these two new pictures of uh, how Madeleine might look like now at the age of six and also to watch a video, a new appeal video. But you have been recently together in Lisbon. Have you truly felt that the Portuguese public opinion is still with you? I think obviously there's been a lot of bitterness, very negative, and uh, it's inevitable that given how much, so much was written negative about it is that some people would have uh, felt that we were involved. But we do feel now that uh, legal action has been taken and that the judicial processes are saying that there's no evidence to support what's been written. You're talking about Gonzalo Morel's book? Yeah, but also with the publication of the file in the first place. Uh, in the initial process of the criminal uh, file and regarding Madeline's disappearance, that, you know, there's no evidence that we were involved, and subsequently the action we've taken recently. But uh, I think people are now prepared to continue the search for, for Madeline, and that's why we're, we're here today asking people to help us try and get this very important message. But how can you explain that Gonzalo Moral uh, has sold over 175,000 copies defending that you played a key role in Madeline's disappearance? I mean, I think it's important to remember, Sandra, the only victim in all of this is Madeline. Um, and, and that's obviously why we're here today, really. We're trying, to, we're trying to reach that person who knows something. And there is somebody who knows something. Not the person who's taken Madeline, but the, the person on the periphery. And that might just be... Um, a colleague of a person, a neighbour, a family, you know, this person, the abductor, has got a mother, a brother, a cousin, a part of a family. So Do you believe that uh, the public opinion uh, in, Portug in Portugal right now, after reading the book of Gonzalo Moral, um, still can support you, still can uh, answer to that appeal? Yeah, no, that's a key point why we've taken action, Sandra, and uh, that's part of the legal process, as you know. There's already an injunction out against the book. He's uh, banned from uh, repeating his thesis that Madeline is dead and that we were involved. Now, that has been two separate judges plus the original judge in the file that have said that. That's where we will do the discussing of that because that's the correct place to discuss And you Abra think that Gonzalo doesn't have a right to uh, uh, share his opinion, his conviction under the evidence he gathered? Uh, into a book. He, do, he doesn't have a freedom of expression to say that and there's, to publish there's it. There's a difference between having freedom of expression and evidence to support a theory. What the judges have said, there isn't evidence to support his theory, so he shouldn't be saying it. And that's about as much as we want to say about him. You know, that's a legal process. We've challenged it. It's been through the judicial process, and that's the correct... But the files were closed, and no thesis, uh, thesis won. How can you explain that after Gonzalo Moral, Paulo Rebelo, the next uh, investigator, also pursued this thesis? He also investigated the possibility of you both play the key role in that That's the key thing, isn't it? It was investigated, the evidence was presented to the judiciary, and the judiciary concluded there was no evidence to support that thesis. That's very no DNA, but how do you no, explain no, no, the co sorts, coincidence the between the DNA seven? DNA is only one aspect of it. There was no evidence to support our involvement in Madeline's disappearance. That's the key thing. Madeline is still missing. We are here as her family to continue the search. Now, I can't speak for the people who read the book, but obviously it doesn't stand up to critical appraisal. But this is the first time that you give us uh, a big interview, uh, not being a guidos, not being a guidos since then. Uh, so now I feel free to ask you this directly. Uh, how can you explain the coincidence of the scent of the cadaver, of cadaver 
done by British and not Portuguese dogs. Sandra, maybe you should be asking the British. judiciary because they've examined all this. But don't you have an explanation for that? I mean, where else are Madeleine's mum and dad? And we're desperate for people to help us find Madeleine, which is why we're here today. The majority of people are inherently good, and I believe the majority of people in Portugal are inherently good people. And we're asking them if they'll help us spread this message to that person or people. So you don't have any explanation for that? Ask the dogs, Sandra. Ask the dogs, no, Jerry. Now I think that I, f I feel free to ask you. Uh, don't you feel free to answer me? I can tell you that we've also looked at evidence about uh, cadaver dogs and they're incredibly unreliable. Unreliable? Cadaver dogs, yes. That's what the evidence shows if they're tested scientifically. You read the files, Kate? Yes, I have read the files. What did shock you most? Any part of the, any detail that you weren't uh, aware of something that has really surprised you or you didn't find well, I've been through them and I've made notes and I've passed that on to our investigation team obviously and you found any any evidence of anything well obviously the only evidence that I want to find is who's taken Madeline and where she is and they're the key things and until we we actually get that that bit of information then you know we're always going to feel like we're a long way away but basically what we're doing is trying to get as much information as we can and try and put the jigs jigsaw together so finally we've got the complete picture. And what about your friends? Did you have a pact of silence with your friends? Do you know judicial secrecy? <laughs> I know it, but we don't have it anymore. You have to put it into context of the situation that we were in. But now that, is the time that, to, that, to you to explain that all. That article that was written in June was directly as a result of a journalist phoning all of us and saying, what can you tell us about it? And we were under explicit instructions that we were not to talk about uh, the details of the case uh, under judicial secrecy. So that's all that people did. And um, I don't think, you know, there should be considered a pact of silence. We were told that's what we were to do. And you wouldn't expect witnesses in other cases in any country to begin out divulging information that may be useful to the perpetrator of the of the crime.